We have a lot to talk about. Uh, not really. We have some. I have a lot to, talk, to about. talk about. Okay. We went to Pax Unplugged. We did go to Pax Unplugged. We did gonna... not go to Pax Unplugged. Someone they went to decided Pax to Unplugged. be a party pooper well, and didn't join us for Pats, Pax Unplugged. Jana had other plans. But... I did. And yeah. I am loyal to my Work plans! plans. <laughs> that could have been avoided at any time. <laughs> but she chose to be a loyal, hardworking, hard worker. So commend you for that. Anyway, let's talk about how much fun we had, Jesse. I guess I'll leave for this segment. Without any women around. I guess I'll leave. No, I was actually I was actually kind of sad that you didn't come with us because I kept seeing... Okay, oh, never mind. Are you, are you a it's demon happening. sprinkler? I'm just having fun. <laughs> just so no much. fun on this channel. This is only work. We don't talk about video games anymore. <laughs> We've so. lost our... We've really lost our way. So what happened at Pax Unplugged while I was gone? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Why don't you tell? Okay. Us? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, do you well, want to say what uh, what Pax Unplugged is? If anyone oh, doesn't know, it? Well, yeah, um, Pax Unplugged is something that's uh, in Philly. Uh, something. It's just anything in Philly. <laughs> well, if you watch talk. if you watch this channel, you probably know what Pax is. But let me explain it further. Pax Unplugged is a uh, board game convention. Uh, you know, RPG, tabletop RPGs, um, classic board games, a bunch of new ideas for board games. It's really wild. Yeah, I like the um, first look section. It was like a whole, like, playtesting area for games that were up and coming or just like indie games or yeah. mm. a lot of really cool ideas and we didn't get to play any of them, most of them, because they were filled up. Mm. Uh, it's it's a little overwhelming. We only went for one day, so... It's a lot of overwhelming. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah we went on uh, Saturday, which was their busiest day. Right. So. Yeah, just one day. I mean, you can pretty much play whatever you want because there's so many board games. Yeah. Um, but if you were going to a convention like that, I'd suggest going for at least two days to look for the first day, then play what you want for the second day. <laughs> yeah. We only had time to look. Or go for the first day, sign up for anything that sounds remotely interesting like while you can. Yeah. Like go on the Friday when most people are still at work. Because we literally, the only games that we got to play were like a couple just like pick up like classic games, uh, which we'll get into, and like one like demo game that was coming out. I mean, the first thing we did was watch a VHS tape of the Star Trek board game. <laughs> From like 95 or something. Which was, was pretty funny. It was so bad. I actually do, did have like an experience with that game like prior. I was like, holy crap. Like as soon as I saw it, like all the horrible <laughs> memories came back because I had a friend in like middle school or maybe even like elementary school that was like super into star trek and the whole family was super into it and they're like do you want to play this star trek game with us and i was like i mean i guess i like star wars better and i'm surprised they didn't just like cut my head off right then and there but we we played it and it's just like one guy as uh i don't even it doesn't matter what his name is he's a klingon and he like steals your ship the enterprise <laughs> and i was like i've got tests for you guys and if you don't solve my puzzles then i'm gonna get the ship blown up on purpose by the Klingons and die a warrior's death. They basically shot it between episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is very evident. And he just walks around. Part of the reason why at the beginning I was like, boop, 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 was, was because he does, he just walks around the ship and it's just like pushing random buttons yeah. and they just add like stock sound effects. So it's just like, boop, 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 boop. You are entering the bridge now. Boop, 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 boop. You are in stasis for two turns. And it's just... So we basically, the only thing I remembered from it was that it was really bad, and at the end, uh, when he's, spoiler alert for the board game of Star Trek on the VHS, <laughs> um, if you don't beat him in time, or get to him, or whatever, or stop him, he, like, gets killed by the Klingons, and he's like, Aah! like, very obviously just, like, <laughs> moving around a lot in his chair, and the camera's, like, freaking out, and a very bad CG Enterprise goes spinning off and explodes. It was, uh, it was something. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after that, though, we actually went to the interesting part of the yeah. convention, which was the expo hall. And wow, it is a huge building. It's like three buildings combined. Yeah, it was yeah. Nice. nuts. It, uh, okay. <laughs> I can't it, say anything. So it's just, just trying to make it well, funny. I'm just trying to, you know, to tell you. 
uh, it just kept going like just forever like imagine like a dealer's room at like a standard convention it's like 10 of those like and it just kept like I just like would look off into the horizon. There would mm. just still be stuff going on. We walked around the whole expo. It was kind of like um, SPX, where it was just that giant room, just giant expo room, and people are like selling stuff. And it was like four of those. Like it was massive. But we got to see a lot of cool stuff. A lot of popular and famous people that I don't actually know about were there because I was listening to people talking to me like, "Oh, so and so's here. We got to get in line now because." In three hours, when the, it's time for the autograph, nobody's gonna get in. Which kind of seemed to be the the theme. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't hear anything in. about that. You know? I, I actually heard that people I was fans of were there just as regular. Oh, really? Ongoers. That's cool. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> Anyone specific, such as? Oh well, uh, the continue guys. Which I'm sure, if you're watching this, you probably know them better than. You know us. <laughs> yeah, Nick Murphy, yeah. who uh, I only know because he was on MMR. <laughs> yeah. Now you know where we live. <laughs> yeah. Not really. Now you know the tri-state in the area. Tr- yeah, we are like in we Pennsylvania live. because we went to PAX Unplugged. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, we could have been from like Maryland or Delaware. I'm sure somebody's going to track us down. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> They're coming for us. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, w- I wish I could have seen them, but I don't even know if they were actually there. Yeah. Uh, anyway... We played a fighting game board game, which yeah. was really fun, which I somehow kicked your ass at, Well, but I feel like that's because you weren't told correctly how to the play. Guy, the guy <laughs> told me the healing like qualifications backwards, so the whole time I was trying to heal when I actually couldn't, and it surprised it wasn't working out. Um, also, he was like, at, towards the end, he was like, maybe I should stop helping you and help him. <laughs> he kept telling you, look, well, yeah. you can do this and this and this and this, and then he would be like, all right, good luck. And there was like... There was a bit of momentum on my side. <laughs> yeah. It was also, like, complex. Uh, more complex than I typically like for a... What was it called again? Uh, it was called Cento. We'll, we'll, we'll plug it. Uh, <laughs> it was called S- Cento, right? Yeah, yeah I yeah. believe so. Cento, I mean, you're on their mailing list. Arcade Fighter. Yeah, I had never got a confirmation on that. Uh, so I don't know if I actually signed up. But the art's really cool. They, they had, I think, like, three or four characters that they had revealed. Um, they only had two playable at the convention yeah but, but they said they're gonna have like 10 uh 10 characters mm. available at launch which is gonna be like q1 or two uh next year so which is pretty wild yeah considering how many materials they use yeah it was a, it was an interesting like puzzle aspect to it too where there was like three like actual marbles like three columns of marbles that were red blue or yellow you had to match colors together by if they were touching and whether you found you took like a single marble or two matching or or four you would do like a like a different attack whether it's like a these are like your super attacks it's a little complicated i'm sure you guys can look it up yeah yeah. see the rules yeah it was fun Uh, though i liked it a lot yeah i'm i'm looking forward to Maybe backing it on Kickstarter, but I, I know it's going to be expensive because it's going to be heavy because the little thing that had all the marbles in it was real heavy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was only with, you know, two characters. I'll, so. I'll wait and see how much. But yeah. um, other than that, we tried to sign up for a Star Wars tabletop RPG, which was very filled by the time we got there. Yeah, I wanted to do that so bad. And it was interesting how there was like, they were like, instead of, oh, these are your three rule books. Uh, you have to like memorize all this stuff in order to play. It was like pick a rule book, and they're all a different like. Some were based on time periods. Some were based on content. So basically, what you get is you get wizards, you get war, and you get rogues. Those yeah, are your three classifications for the rule books. Pretty much, yeah. It was like, do you want to like, be have a Jedi centric storyline, or do you want to <coughs> do like a space battle centric one, or do you want to do like a smuggling yeah. one, which is. Um, I think uh, the only other, the only Star Wars RPG that I've ever seen played is on um, Pencils and Parsecs, which is, I think they do Edge of the Empire, which is that one that I was telling you about that um, mm. the guy who voices Reinhardt is on it. He's a, he's a droid. <laughs> I vaguely remember. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, shout outs to them. <laughs> it was very enjoyable. That was the only, uh, I'm going to get every like critical role fan to like come in and slip my throat but like that's the only really rpg streaming 
thing that I ever Man, podcast that I ever really got into. I don't, I don't think anybody who's a fan of Critical Role is going to fault you for that. Uh, Critical Role is a time investment, okay? Yeah, it's don't. Cool. I, man, <laughs> I like it, yeah. but I can't invest into it. Yeah, we did start listening to um, the Adventure Zone on the way home. Oh, that's right. And then before our conversations got real deep and real personal, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we listened to like maybe the first what twenty minutes. No, it was at least like forty. Oh, okay, um, but it was really funny. I, I like the the McElroys. They're really funny. I didn't know that they made Adventure Zone, or I probably would have watched it sooner or listened to it sooner. Um, but I could maybe. Enjoy that one because they I've don't take them to slow. all of adventures. Well, I've listened to the all of the first season. Yeah, I love it. They don't. Uh, they like don't take times. themselves <laughs> too seriously, which is what I it, think it seems like Critical Role might do. Like it's a very high fantasy. They don't. They really don't. Like they don't care throughout. Like <laughs> until like the very end. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Um. What else did we do there? Anything else cool? Anything I can join oh, you on? Well, let me show you some things. Oh, some oh things. yeah. Wow, my glasses. I'm to break my glasses. Filling the empty space with a song. Do, do, do. Don't worry, I'll dance. <laughs> I'm going to knock the mic. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> well, first of all... Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. What the uh, fuck is this? This is an officially branded... Blockbuster board game. We should play this. I was gonna say on stream, but like we should make a video of us playing this. It's bizarre. Yeah. There was a there was a basically a booth there that was set up like an old blockbuster with old VHS tapes mm -hmm. and like a wire rack. The black. Yeah, I was just gonna say the black like wire rack. And all VHSs mm -hmm. and. People These were, yeah, wearing like the blockbuster shirt, and they had like an old like Windows ninety five like yellowed gross computer. Yeah, and... but I mean these I things were, were just <laughs> side by side on those racks, yeah. and it was just you know it looked like a a cart for a VHS. Yeah, and it, it's in the like big bulky semi transparent plastic case that a uh, that VHSs were in, weren't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, look. I guess we're doing a, a impromptu guess, unboxing. Hey, look at that. It's um, an actual VHS. Yes, a real one. On top. I get to watch that and play Just along kidding. with it. Just kidding. It's a board? Does it say, it's probably the be manual. kind, please rewind? Oh, no. Oh, it's it's, not, it's a little board. It's basically like a card game. If you ever played um, Fishbowl. Oh. It's, yeah, I knew that would get you excited. Oh. It's that, but it's with movies. And the tag, oh. well, no, listen, listen, I knew that was going to turn you off. It's even got the little sticker, be kind, please rewind, with the little yeah. Walmart ripoff smiley face. The tagline is a game for anyone who's ever seen a movie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a movie game for anyone who's ever seen a movie. So it seems like it's not going to be real deep pulls. It's just going to be like basic fun stuff because how, how Fishbowl goes, and I think how this one goes, is you describe the... Yeah. You describe whatever movie it is either in one word, uh, quote it, or act it. So it's like charades or taboo. Seems kind of cool. It's a little parking lot for some reason. Oh shoot, I want to play. We can play. We should play. I want to play it. <laughs> um, Please? We can play it. Right now. Right now? No. I don't think we have time right. to do it. Right in the middle of this video, but maybe we can play immediately after. Does it have to be four plus players? I don't think so. We can look at it later. If so, we're screwed because we don't have friends. <laughs> Dang. What else is in there? Anything That's cool? absolutely not true. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just like, I guess, the um, different types of movies. Comedy, action, drinking straw. I thought that was a pen. Nope. Why do you need a straw? <laughs> Ah, That's the place on we, the board. We with gotta the sign. read it. And there's, oh. <laughs> there's a little buzzer. It doesn't do anything yet because we don't have batteries. But. Oh man, this is the '90s, huh? They require batteries. And a sticker. Potato. Oh, Big show potatoes. them the. Uh, do you have the little plushie of the no, potato? No, that's, that's hanging on the bookshelf at home. Nice. They uh, the the company's was called um, Big Potato Games, and they gave us a little potato plushie. Just the most bizarre thing I saw there. Yeah, much. it was really cool. I'm keeping this. No, we walked up to the booth yours. and we saw. I'm keeping this for my own. Time. We we walked up to the booth and saw the whole presentation and everything. And we were just kind of like, <coughs> we were like in a time capsule, and she <laughs> was just like, 
<laughs> just took <laughs> it and was like, I'm buying this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what else you got? Well, because I am a forever DM, I bought another RPG system. <laughs> Always a DM, never a player. <laughs> Uh, it's called The Burning Wheel. Uh, this book is exclusive at PAX, mm -hmm. so I needed it then. So he bought it immediately as soon as somebody was it's, like, oh, he was like, uh, oh, yeah, you can, uh, there's this yeah, my cool friend was, called The Burning Wheel, but you can only get it here. And he was like, okay. <laughs> he just bought it immediately. Yeah, my friend was like, this is an exclusive book to PAX, and he's like, oh, it's got a nice canvas cover. And I'm like, ah, that's, I'm in. Sold. <laughs> he was already just like stuffing money in somebody's face. <laughs> but it's really nice. It's it's super slick. I haven't really looked into it yet, but I'm sure I will. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys will learn more about it. Also, this is, well, this is something you can talk about. Oh, uh, really. sure. So, um, we have a friend whose name is, I think his full business name is Charlie Ferguson Avery, or Charles, he might go by, which is a little more profesh. Um, but he um, kickstarted this book. It's actually, so he made uh, an original book book called uh, World War Occult, which is like, uh, what if World War One had like kind of an eldritch horror to it, and it's super cool. Um, and then he recently kickstarted this one, I don't know if you can see it, called Into the Weird and Wild, but weird is W-Y-R-D, because what a weird way to spell it. Um, but it's basically a tabletop system, we're going to do a little show and tell. Uh, it's a tabletop system that's like a horror fantasy RPG. So, like, if H.P. Lovecraft made um, Over the Garden Wall. Um, but it made... <laughs> it got up to, like, $50,000 on the Kickstarter. Yeah. And I remember, like, we hung out with him, like, that day. And he kept checking his phone. And he was just like, oh, God. <laughs> he's like, I don't know what to even make anymore. <laughs> like, he's like, what can I What can I even do? So, but it's, it's really cool art. Um... And it sounds really creepy, and we'll have to have him uh, DM it for us sometime, because uh, he was actually our introduction into um, D&D in the first place, because Drianna and I had never really played it. He's a great DM. Uh, uh, he's a really good DM, a good storyteller, um, <laughs> and can keep us wackos on track when we <laughs> get off with our stupid jokes and stuff, as I'm sure you'll see whenever we launch our Pokemon Tabletop Great Plug Me. When can we expect <laughs> more episodes of that? That'll, that'll be starting in January. Sweet. So, uh, so, look forward to that. Nice New Year's present for you guys. Yeah. This is perfect for getting yourself motivated. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm really excited. We, we've started to dabble in, uh, in that, and we've had a ton of fun with it. So, I hope anyone who watches slash listens to it will appreciate it. Mm.